My husband and I have two kids, a young grammar school boy and an infant girl. He told me for two weeks leading up to Mother's Day that he had an entire weekend planned for me. This is not normal, but there have been years in the past where I complained and felt hurt because he didn't really do much of anything for me on Mother's Day. I always went all out for him on Father's Day and I just felt unappreciated. So I think he finally understood where I was coming from and would make it memorable for me this year. I quite literally only asked for a massage and he repeatedly said that he couldn't just give me a massage because it wasn't enough. So like, I don't know. At this point, I truly think this man went all out. Anyway, Friday rolls around and a bunch of people start showing up. He invited a good 10 to 15 people over. I think I knew two people. He called it the Mother's Day Bonfire. We had a fire all right, but I was the one who chased the kids around all evening, my oldest while holding the baby, and some other person's two kids because they weren't watching them, and quite literally no one spoke to me. I wasn't acknowledged until the very end of the evening, and that was by my husband's buddy, who told me he was stealing my husband to go out four-wheeling. It's like 11pm, and everyone, except me, was drinking. I said my husband wasn't going anywhere. I even said this to my husband. You're drinking, you're not going anywhere. He took that as an, oh, I need to find a designated driver and then I can go. So he asked the neighbor to drive him around and took off with everyone. I'm extremely hurt at this point because this was my promised weekend and I got stuck with other people's kids, wasn't spoken to at all, had a mess to clean up and now my husband is taking off. I explain how hurt I am the next morning. He says he gets it, apologizes and says he just had too much to drink and wasn't thinking clearly. Okay, I get it. It's whatever. We didn't do anything Saturday because he spent half the day sleeping off a hangover. Well, yesterday rolled around and his boss called him at 6am and asked him to come to work because they were understaffed and he said yes. So I expressed hurt and said, but it's Mother's Day. And he says, I know, I'm sorry, I just don't want to pass up the opportunity for more hours. I get that too, so whatever. He gets home at 5pm, starts getting the kids dressed and ushered toward the door. So I think we're finally going to celebrate. We end up going on a walk. I love walking, but five minutes in he's complaining and has us turn around because of the black flies. They weren't even bad. So again, I'm disappointed. When we get home, he lays down on the couch and says, Oh, your gift is in the truck. So I go down and it's a $5 storage container for sugar or flour. I do like this stuff, but I'm so hurt now. I asked him if I could at least get a massage and he said, I'm sorry babe, I'm just so tired and fell asleep around 8pm when he usually doesn't even go to bed until midnight or 1am. I just sat there crying. I chucked the three gifts I'd already bought him for Father's Day in the trash can. Personalised items that cost me more than I want to admit, but I don't even care anymore. He found them in the garbage this morning and asked me what they were and why they were in the trash covered in food. I told them they were his Father's Day gifts and left it at that. He's now saying that he tried to make my weekend special and that he's hurt by me throwing away his gifts to retaliate against him for it not turning out how he wanted it to. Am I the idiot for throwing away my husband's Father's Day gifts? Holy crap, would I be angry? Edit, I am angry now. Leaving other people's kids with you. Why did they all bring their kids? Where were their parents? Why did he invite people you didn't know? And then you had to clean it all up? If he knew he couldn't think clearly, why did he drink? It's not whatever. This is full-on BS. You go on a walk for five minutes before he starts complaining, and he doesn't even go to get your gift. He makes you go get it, and no massage. He then falls asleep at eight, meaning that you're probably the one putting your kids to bed on Mother's Day. What the ever-loving crap bucket. He's hurt? He's hurt? What a scum bucket. He deserves a divorce for Father's Day. Getting served divorce papers on Father's Day? Chef's kiss. This infuriated me. He wasn't intoxicated when he planned the party, which was very clearly for himself. This was intentional. Inviting people over who were his friends, not hers, was intentional. Getting intoxicated and leaving OP to handle the kids was intentional. Being too hungover to clean up, give OP the one thing she asked for, or even just spend time with OP was intentional. Getting OP a crap gift was intentional. Then OP is like, it's okay, I understand. Quit being a damn doormat, OP. He does this because you've repeatedly told him it's okay and he can get away with it, both with your words and reactions. When I married my husband, we had a smallish wedding, 150 guests. Trust me, that's more for our families. We paid for everything ourselves. Altogether, we spent about $25,000. 
It was within our budget and we'd saved up for it. And that included everything. My dress, the wedding party's dresses and tux rentals. Catering, you name it, we paid and came in under budget. Our guests were family and close friends, the way it should be, and they were generous with gifts from our registry and cash in envelopes. Our house was filled with great stuff we needed when everything was said and done, and our savings were several thousand dollars over where we started before we paid for the wedding. My husband's sister just eloped in February, and nobody found out about it until early April when she sent out links to her wedding registry. Only a few people have bought anything off of it, and she's getting upset about that. All she talks about whenever we speak is how cheap everyone is. Every conversation leads back to the same topic. After more than a month of this, I've had enough. I asked her if she understood why we got gifts when I married her brother, like at our physical wedding that took place at a church and then a reception at a rented ballroom. She said I was treating her like an idiot and that she understood the difference between our weddings. I asked her why she would expect the same treatment for two different events. I said that only an idiot would think the outcome would be the same in both situations. She's mad at me. My husband said he was also frustrated with her stupidity, but that I should apologize for calling her an idiot. Not the idiot. I asked her if she sends gifts to all the birthday parties she isn't invited to attend, or even told about, for months. The difference is that you bring gifts to a wedding because the groom and wife took the time, effort and money to throw you a party, give you a meal or drink and spend time with you. The groom and bride, or grooms and brides, spent money on you so you reciprocate the courtesy. Sending a gift list after an elopement just screams gift grabbing. Most people will not buy a gift for a wedding they weren't invited to. So a person gets married, I'm not invited to anything, not even a sad Coca-Cola, and I'm expected to buy a gift. I may buy something small if I'm incredibly close to that person, but if not, I would only offer some congratulations, and she can thank her lucky stars that nobody's answered sarcastically to receive her registry. Yeah, that jumped out at me as well. Sister-in-law, yuppers folks, we got hitched. We eloped without one of you in attendance, but you can make it up to me by purchasing things for me from this list I made out. I would never give anyone anything for this. It's a huge breach of manners and etiquette. My brother Miles lost his wife Sarah four years ago. He has a son Eric who's a tween. Miles married his wife Josie about 18 months ago, and yes, she's trying the whole second mom thing. Eric is in grief therapy and Miles is being better about pushing Josie on Eric than he could be, but he also hasn't been as respectful of the fact that Eric doesn't see her as a mother as he could be. Sarah unfortunately didn't have sisters, so I'm the woman closest to her age in Eric's life and I'm trying to be there for him as much as I can. We're very close. Not that I'll ever take Sarah's place, no one will. But he knows if there's ever something he doesn't want to talk to his dad about, my home is always open to him. So for Mother's Day, Eric wanted to visit Sarah's grave and then come to Mother's Day lunch with my family and me. Miles agreed to this plan initially, but the day before, he cancelled on Eric's behalf, saying that he and Josie thought it was best that Eric spend the whole day with them, since Eric should show appreciation to Josie on Mother's Day. I argued with Miles and eventually, Miles said I could come by and see Eric and get the gift he'd gotten me, but that he wanted Eric to stay with him and Josie. When I went to the house, Eric gave me some flowers and a small candle and we talked outside. He said his phone was taken away because he'd refused to say or do anything for Josie for Mother's Day. Imagine punishing a child because he doesn't love you. I didn't say anything to Eric, but when I was leaving, I told Miles that I thought he was doing untold damage to his son by bullying him into pretending he cared about Josie. Josie said it wasn't bullying for wanting Eric to participate in celebrating her on Mother's Day. So I looked at her and said, Josie, whose mother are you? Josie had a loss a few months ago, so this hit her pretty hard. I'm not going to lie and say I didn't realize this would upset her, but frankly, she isn't Eric's mother, and she can't make up for wishing she was by making the day harder for him. Josie burst into tears and started shouting at me, and Miles told me to just take Eric with me because, obviously, this whole thing has been a failure. Miles is saying I went too far, reminding Josie she isn't a mother. But I feel like someone had to because she was acting like she's entitled to the title when the child doesn't feel that way. If she was having a hard day and wanted to memorialize what she's been through, then that's her business. But Eric shouldn't be bullied into a pantomime because of her grief. Every stepmom who thinks her feelings matter way more than the child's feelings is an idiot. Every single one. Everyone who defends the child's feelings, grief and choices and basically treats them like a human being rather than a child-shaped object is correct. 
You might have been a little harsh because of her loss, but frankly, it was justified by how badly Josie and Miles were behaving. You are not the idiot. I'm going to say everyone's the idiot here. Quite frankly, I think you aren't assigning enough blame to your brother, Miles, in all of this. Josie seems to be taking the brunt of your entirely justified frustration on Eric's behalf. And while she certainly is at fault, I think the main bad guy here is the father, who isn't doing right by his son. You're losing sight of that by taking your rage out on Josie. And saying they're not a mother a few months after someone loses a pregnancy. Damn, OP, this is something that is openly discussed among women who've lost their pregnancy. I've never had a loss, and I know not to say something like that. It was intentionally cruel. You are the idiot for the whose mother are you comment. That absolutely was a dig at her lost baby and you know it. That was a childish, nuclear and frankly disgusting comment. Saying you didn't know it would hurt her feelings is like saying you didn't know water makes things wet. My parents are leaving town for a few days, four, next month. They don't want me, a teen male, home alone for four days. So they decided to ask their kids, moms are 28, 26 and 24, dads are 24 and 23, if any of them would want to come stay for a few days or if they'd let me stay with one of them. Answers were slow coming in and I wasn't surprised when I heard my parents say that none seemed willing. I'm not close to any of my half-siblings. I'd say I don't have any relationship with them. I don't really ever see them. They never talk to me, we're not social media friends, we don't text and they don't send a card or anything for my birthday. I maybe see them at Christmas, but it's not like they spend time with me. I never felt like I had siblings. I'd always felt like I lived with two sibling sets, and then I was an only child. I say half-siblings because I'm trying to be respectful to my parents who love their kids, but also not make it seem like we're all super close and just siblings. I have different parents from each of them, and it matters a lot to them. They always saw me as the kid their living parent had after they lost their other parent. My parents weren't getting anywhere, so I asked my best friend's parents if they'd mind me staying for four days. They didn't. I told them my parents didn't know yet, but I didn't think the people they asked would agree. They know the deal by now, so I told my parents, and they were annoyed. I asked my friend's parents instead of waiting for my half-siblings. I told them it was a good idea to have a backup plan in place for when they all say no. My parents said I don't know that they'll all say no. A few days went by and still no answer from two of them and my parents asked why I appeared to want them to say no. I said it wasn't that, I just expected it. They told me it was difficult enough to know I wanted a sibling, something I didn't know they heard me say, and it was a couple of years ago and said to my friend, when I had five of them but to know I have such low expectations. I said it's my reality which they can ignore if they want to. But I don't feel like a sibling to them and I know they don't consider me a real sibling, not any of them. My parents told me I still went behind their back and it was wrong and showed such a lack of trust and faith. Am I the idiot? You're not the idiot. If any of your half-siblings were willing, they would have answered immediately. They were just delaying responding no, perhaps in hope that another would step up and say yes. Even setting that aside, you're certainly old enough to decide where you want to stay while they're gone. They should have asked you that before even reaching out to your half-siblings. Info. Why can't a teen stay alone for four days? Is there no one nearby you could call in case of an emergency? Or are you a demon of chaos from the pit of the bad place who will likely destroy the city if unsupervised? Why do they need you to stay with a sibling? A friend seems to be the first reasonable choice at your age. I'd never leave my teen alone for that long. No parents I know would do that. He's not a demon of chaos from the pit of the bad place, but he is a teen boy with an undeveloped brain with like-aged brain friends who might do stupid crap if left alone for four days and nights. And barring that, it's scary to be home alone at night for an extended period, and that's not weird or weak. It would be irresponsible as a parent to put a kid in that situation. We have an old house. The stairway to the basement has a five-inch wide horizontal ledge. Wife likes to store stuff there. I've been telling her for years it's a bad idea. Whenever I go downstairs to do laundry or put away groceries in our pantry, I make sure that ledge is empty. She always says that it's just handy and that she always means to clean it up. I find all kinds of crap there. You name it, bottles, jars, open boxes of garbage bags, lighter fluid. She came in from the backyard where she was gardening to use the bathroom. On her way out, she went downstairs for something. I heard her fall and then scream. After we got home from the hospital, where they reattached her toe, I asked her why she thought that leaving her garden shears there was a good idea. 
She said I was being an idiot for saying, I told you so. I didn't. I just asked her why she did it. I feel terrible that she got injured. I feel terrible that she feels dumb for leaving a heavy, sharp object where it could fall easily. I feel crappy that I didn't see them in time to put them somewhere safe. None of that means what happened wasn't entirely predictable and entirely her fault. Once again, for the cheap seats, I did not say I told you so. Am I the idiot for asking about her thought process? Not the idiot. Your question is a tad stupid. Obviously, she was being thoughtless and or lazy. While she's unfortunate to have suffered this accident, it's better to be the person who caused the unsafe situation than someone innocent. Her negligence could have seriously injured or killed someone. While she was the one who was hurt this time, it could have easily been you walking down the stairs. I can only hope that you don't have children that could have gotten hurt instead of you. She should feel dumb. She should feel embarrassed. She should learn a lesson from this. This is exactly what you were trying to prevent, but you picked the worst possible time to ask her about the accident. Right now, she's very vulnerable, emotional, and embarrassed. She already feels stupid, and you made her feel worse. I know it wasn't on purpose, but she feels this way. Have a conversation later, but not right now. Then why is he pussyfooting around the conversation? There's no point in asking her why, because they both know the reason was she was being lazy and dismissive of a dangerous situation for the sake of her convenience. I disagree that now isn't the time for the conversation. I think it absolutely is, but it needs to be a very frank setting of boundaries. The phrasing OP used was petty and didn't accomplish anything other than making himself feel better for a moment, and his claim that he didn't say, I told you so, is eye-roll worthy. For the sake of the safety of everyone in the house, he needs to let her know that there is absolutely nothing to be stored on that ledge from now on, and it's non-negotiable. He doesn't need to be rubbing her face in the fact that she already lost a damn toe.